Howdy folks, Mark Serbu, gun designer, gun nut. I know what you're thinking again. What the heck is this thing you've got and why are you making me look at it? Well, looking at this is gonna make you better. <laughs> and uh, what it is, is something, it's just a fixture I made to test out Glock mags. Um, so I was playing around with a blowback pistol, not recoil operated, which of course the Glock is. And one thing if you may or may not notice is when you have a recoil operated gun like the Glock, the slide and the barrel travel back together and after a very short bit of travel, the barrel stops and it actually tilts down. And that's how it unlocks from the slide. And once it tilts down, when the slide comes forward again, now this round can go into the barrel and the barrel's got a, a more ideal angle than just sitting here straight out. You know, you're trying to, you've got something that's going up at an angle and now your barrels come down an angle. So this is, this is a great way to do it. And I didn't know when I have a fixed barrel, I didn't know where on earth I'm going to put this mag up and down, up and down four and a half. Uh, and so I just kind of started playing around in CAD, which you do CAD or you just download other people's crap, learn CAD. It's the most awesome thing you can do if you're going to make this kind of stuff and the other kind of stuff that actually, yeah, I can, I can still talk about guns. It's, uh, it's 2024, October. YouTube hasn't, uh, you know, outlawed us talking about guns yet, but it, it's coming. So anyway, um, as you can see here, I've got two slots so I can just loosen these screws up. And of course I've got, uh, there's a nut on here and here cause you know, plastic doesn't thread into very well. So it's, it's good and sturdy. So this moves forward and aft. And as far as up and down, uh, they, basically you could just reprint this piece with a mag cut out wherever the heck you want it, or the mag catch cut out wherever you want it. Uh, and the way I figured out initially where it would go is I just shoved the mag in as far as it would go on my quote unquote bolt, this blue piece. And, uh, and I went down from there a little bit. And the spring isn't totally necessary. Uh, and it's not gonna work like a real gun, of course, the dynamics are all off because this is super light, but let's just see what happens if you let it go. Not really great. Uh, and in fact, yeah. Um, so that tells me I'm either too far forward, too far back, too far up, too far down. You, you don't know. This is, uh, you, you'd think there'd be a scientific way to do this instead of trial and error. And there kind of sort of is, but uh, this is a simple and actually pretty quick way to do it. So let's try that again. I'll, I'll put the mag down farther. Um, yeah, this. This doesn't have enough strength. Let's just push it. So, so the mag or the, the round made it in there, uh, but as we're going to see on high-speed video, it was probably not an optimal angle. Um, you don't want your round having to go way up and, and at a huge angle. You, you want it as, as straight as it can be, pointed at the chamber mouth, and uh, we'll get there. But it'll be cool to see what this looks like on high-speed video. Yeah, and you know, and this, this spring wasn't ideal either. I, I started off making this and of course, you know, I get sidetracked. I got a million things to do. And uh, this was actually a spring I made for something on my airplane. So it's got nothing to do with this. It's definitely suboptimal. And this bolt here, if you can see, it's actually got a hole in there. Uh, and I made it just the diameter to stick some some steel or lead or tungsten or whatever to make this a lot heavier because once it's heavier and it gets moving it's got a hell of a lot more momentum to shove the round in the chamber than just a piece of plastic. Just FYI this barrel quote unquote barrel this is actually one of the three pieces that I made for the uh, the rifling video and I actually rifled one of them and this is the one I said it's way too thin to be safe for nine millimeter but you know we're not not gonna be shooting out of it so no big deal here and what's funny it's uh it's been reamed, drilled and reamed for the right diameter for the rifling button, so it's it's proper for a nine millimeter, but uh, it's actually got a chamber in it. So this is a smooth bore. Uh, oh, because I got a smooth bore barrel. Oh my God, it's an NFA firearm, but but this isn't a gun, and this isn't actually a barrel. This is a fixture, so so I'm 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 okay on legal grounds, but uh, yeah. So obviously you have to have the chamber, or the the round won't go in. So it it is. It is a proper chamber, and it's it's even got the right headspace, got the right stick out for the headspace, so kind of funny. 
uh, and this is just shoved in here. Uh, same with the uh, the spring guide. This is also a, just a tube. It's a 4130 um, seamless tubing, quarter inch, and it's just shoved into here. Yeah, I had designs to you know some kind of a nut on here, and this flares out. And but it, you know, it, sometimes it, it's as little time as you can spend on something to get it to work uh, it is the best course of action because. You know, you got a lot of stuff to do and save time where you can. Okay, first try, here we go, and not so good, hmm. Okay, second attempt, also not good, but man, look at that. Have you ever seen a round spin like that before? Wow, that is weird. Okay, so, uh wasn't working very well and like I said I left room for some weight in there so here's a nice tungsten end mill it goes about <laughs> almost all the way to the front so it's gained a lot of weight now so it's uh, it's gonna have some serious momentum and you can see inside uh, these are actually some kind of bronze some kind of alloy nut kind of cool uh, anyway so just shove it in there and this you know the cool thing about this the 3d printing stuff this slides just perfectly. It's got just the right amount of clearance and everything, and it's, it's very, I mean, it's very smooth. You can see that. And of course, this took about two or three tries of printing it out, but that's how this stuff works. It's great. Doesn't work, come back, try it again. Oh yeah, let me just change this dimension, and then eventually you get it. And like this, this was a pain in the butt, and uh, but now look, it just, it fits in there just perfectly. It's it kind of snaps in and uh, neat. That's the, the beauty of 3D printing. You got all this time to just, all you gotta do is push the button and walk away and uh, you know, make different stuff. All right, well, this too, just gonna shove that in there. And there we go. So now we've got a lot more mass, got some serious inertia, and we're gonna try the high speed again and see how that goes. Let's see what the extra mass does for us. And yes, it works. Of course, we've got bolt bounce and uh, you know, because the spring doesn't go all the way, but hey, whatever, we don't care about that part of it. All right, in this attempt, I held the mag higher and I had an extra round in the mag. So that's why the bolt kind of got stuck from too much drag. But again, no big deal. We're not looking at that part of it. We just want to see how the round goes into the chamber. And there's a really nice one. The mag was down lower, so there's not much drag from the follower and uh, the bolt even bounced a couple times. And there's another nice one. Now here I changed the angle a bunch. I thought we'd get a better view looking in there. And it's, it's kind of cool, but can't really see that much. So I rotated it back a little bit. And uh, this is definitely better. A little dark, but uh, you can still see what's going on. So how'd you like that high-speed video? Pretty cool, huh? I think I'm going to put this in the W column. Uh, yeah, it worked great. Once I got the uh, tungsten carbide end mill in there, yeah, I said tungsten, but of course tungsten carbide. Um, that made a big difference. You really need to have a fair amount of inertia. And if I had a proper spring on here that actually, you know, gave it force all the way forward, it wouldn't have bounced. And, but whatever, it, it showed what I wanted to see, and that's what's important. Uh, yeah, this thing is not ideal, but... You know, I, I design this stuff while I'm sitting there at home watching TV in the background and drinking a beer or something and just playing around in CAD. And uh, yeah, if I had to do it over again, I would probably make this a lot bigger or just leave it out altogether. Just let let this side of the gun be open uh, so you could see better. And uh, But we, we saw it just fine. And, uh, you know, I ended up moving from the beginning of the video to the air. Er, from the beginning of the high speed to the end, I did move this back and forth a little bit. I, I started out kind of midway and then I went all the way back. And it's uh, it's good either way. And you know, if you really wanted to get yourself an envelope, you know, a range of, of positions of your magazine, this is the ideal thing to do it with. Uh, pretty neat. I, uh, I'm I'm happy because you know this this thing is nothing. It's it's plastic. And by the way, this is just plain old PLA. Um, nothing super fancy. Uh, and yeah, but this isn't highly stressed not going to be subjected to extreme temperatures or anything uh, Man, it's uh, yeah, it served its purpose and uh, And now I know more and so do you <laughs> so you owe me. Yeah, it's 
this is the kind of stuff you don't have to necessarily know. Uh, you, know you can look at how other guns are have been done. You know, there's plenty of open bolt submachine guns out there that have a fixed barrel. So you know, you're you're shoving something from a magazine and have to go you have to go up a ramp or something. So there's lots of examples of that where you can figure out where to place your magazine. But it's kind of nice to know you know what the stuff actually does that that one where it was spinning in there i've never seen a round spinning going into the chamber before that was that was pretty unusual let me know in the comments if you've never seen a round spinning as it enters the chamber before i hope uh, hope you haven't because i you know i look at a lot of this stuff on high speed and i've not seen that until today so cool all right well i'm blabbing now so it's time to go thanks for watching as always i appreciate you and i will catch you next time